Most personal trainers and gyms would have you believe that you need to exercise every single day for an hour for 365 days to build your dream body and I'm here to tell you that that view of building your body and muscular training is completely wrong. I as a doctor have for the past few years engaged myself in multiple strength training protocols and I've found that following the traditional advice leads to more injuries rather than strength gains. After researching for about three years, I have finally found the perfect three-day evidence-based strength training protocol backed by the latest research and science that just takes me about 40 minutes per week to get 10x the results in about one-seventh of time that most people take. This routine is made for people who have busy lives and they just want to get done with exercise as soon as possible and get the maximum gains. The routine that I follow is a combination of two protocols. The first protocol that I do is the big Six high intensity strength training protocol of which I do two sessions of 12 minutes each equating to a total of about 24 minutes per week and these are divided into two days. The second protocol that I use is blood flow restriction training of which I do about one session of 16 minutes in one week and this all takes me about 40 minutes per week as I've told you before. Starting with high intensity strength training. High intensity strength training is a type of resistance training where you you are doing a very high load exercise with very low volume meaning the load is high and the reps are low as compared to high rep training. Research suggests that high intensity strength training has multiple benefits. It increases muscle mass which has benefits from decreasing aging by about 9 years to increasing your basal metabolic rate because more muscles require calories to lowering the risk of developing diabetes, heart disease and of course it makes you look really good. The second benefit of high intensity strength training is unlike cardio it is way safer because in cardio what we are actually doing is we are using the acceleration component of the force so force is mass into acceleration whenever you play with acceleration you don't have control over it and sudden disruptions in the velocity and the acceleration can cause muscle tendon injury compared to when we look in a controlled strength training environment where we are lifting weights as you lift weights your muscles get weaker while lifting that weight and this causes you to drop the weight meaning there's less chances of injury again we are here dealing with mass and not acceleration which is easily controllable that's why high intensity strength training is safer if you want to get strength gains compared to cardio thirdly high intensity strength training causes increased burning of fat by releasing a factor such as epinephrine fourthly it also increases bone mass density preventing the risk of having fractures or osteoporosis in the future the routine that i personally use is called the big six which is a form of compound training consisting of about six exercises along three axes. These are divided into two days each with three exercises in the first day and three exercises on the second day. The three axes are the upper vertical axis, the upper horizontal axis and the lower vertical axis. So in the upper vertical axis I can push and I can pull and in the upper horizontal axis I can push and I can pull and in the lower vertical axis I can push and pull. When you do the bi-directional training in all these three axes Axis, you are basically doing six compound exercises which trains the rest of your body. I'm training unidirectionally in two upper axis and one lower axis along the upper vertical axis, one in the upper horizontal axis and one in the lower vertical axis and the second day of this training would have the opposite movement along those axes. For example, on the day one I would be doing a pull on the upper vertical axis, a push on the upper horizontal axis which is also called as a chest press and then push on the lower vertical axis which would be a leg press. On the day two it would be the opposite movements. So I would be doing a push shoulder press on the upper vertical axis, pull on the upper horizontal axis which is back row and then I would be doing a pull on the lower vertical axis and this is a deadlift. I do three sets of these three exercises totaling to about nine sets. Within these sets I'm doing about eight to twelve reps of each exercise to failure. Just to save time I do cross resistance training meaning I'm jumping from the first set of the first exercise to the first set of the second exercise to the first set of the third exercise. So I'm going from one exercise to the other to the other and then looping back. This helps you save a lot of time while other people are <laughs> waiting there to recover from that exercise and it also pushes your cardiovascular system harder because you're jumping from one exercise to the other. Hence it's beneficial both in terms of gain 
explaining cardiovascular benefits as well as strength benefits along with saving you a lot of time. The principles involved in the big six high intensity strength training. The first principle is muscular failure. Evolutionarily, we have evolved to gain muscles when we do high intensity, low volume training, especially towards muscle failure. Muscles are indeed metabolically expensive for your body to build and maintain. For instance, a pound of muscle per day consumes 96 calories more than a pound of fat. And if we dive into our species survival and evolution, going perhaps 100,000 years ago, there was a shortage of food, which is why our bodies adapted to conserve energy in the maximum way possible. So your body would not give you big muscles until it felt that you needed it because they are metabolically expensive compared to other forms like fat in terms of energy and maintenance. And this is why we must reach muscular failure. When you reach muscular failure, that is when you're lifting weights and you can no longer lift weights, you are sending a signal down to your body that if you don't get stronger, you are gonna die and your body is then forced to invest in the single resource that can protect it from death, that is bigger muscles and more strength to fend off any danger. Research suggests that lifting heavy weights in about eight to 12 reps where you reach failure with these heavy weights is the most beneficial exercise for your body. There's another benefit of reaching muscular failure, especially if you do it within this eight to 12 rep limit. The benefit of this being sequential recruitment. As you lift weights, your muscles start getting weaker. And this is because of two factors. One, because there's injury happening along the muscles. Secondly, we are running out of oxygen in those muscles. This forces your muscles to switch from anaerobic metabolism to anaerobic metabolism and basically switches the muscle fibers from type 1 muscle fibers to type 2 muscle fibers. Type 1 muscle fibers are called as slow twitch fibers and they are engaged when you're lifting light weights or when you're doing your exercise for the first few reps, you're actually using type 1 fibers because they're oxygen dependent. For the second half of the exercise and as you reach muscular failure, you're engaging type 2 muscle fibers which are also called as fast twitch fibers. These muscles rely upon anaerobic metabolism and they are far more powerful and stronger than type 1 fibers. If you were to think about this in an evolutionary context, as you are, let's say, fighting off a tiger and you're running out of energy, your body presumes that you need more strength to fight off that tiger and switches it to type 2 muscle response, which is way stronger, albeit it's way shorter because they're utilizing more energy via glycolysis, which is anaerobic metabolism building type 2 muscle fibers over type 1 is where the gold mine of strength training lies in. This is because type 2 muscle fibers are more powerful and stronger than type 1 muscle fibers. Secondly, they increase basal metabolic rate more than type 1 muscle fibers because they rely on glycogen, which burns more fuel for energy. Thirdly, these muscles have a higher potential for hypertrophy. These muscles also decrease insulin resistance the most, hence decreasing your risk of developing obesity, diabetes, or heart disease in the future. The second principle of the big six high intensity training is muscular tension. When you lift weights, what you're doing is you're exerting muscular tension on your body via those weights. Now, most people think what matters the most is the number of reps you do. Science tells us otherwise. It's not the number of reps you do, but the time under tension that matters. So the more time you can give that muscular tension for that weight to be on that muscle, the better your results are gonna be, not with reps. So concentrate on muscular tension than on reps. Research tells us that whenever we are lifting weights, both during the concentric which is the lifting phase and the eccentric which is the lowering phase of the movement we must slow it down and there's a particular form of method called super slow strength training which was made by an ed physician which i found great results from i personally use about two seconds of concentric phase which is the lifting phase and three seconds of the eccentric phase where i'm releasing the weight totaling about a five second time under tension per rep so two seconds of lifting three seconds of releasing for a total total of about 8 to 12 reps. This in contrast to other people in the gym who are just trying to get the rep count in, which doesn't make as much as difference as time under tension. The third principle is progressive overload. As you will start getting stronger because of the hypertrophy happening in your muscles, so the weight requirement to reach muscular failure will also be increased. As you progress, keep increasing the weight so that you reach muscular failure. I personally, for each exercise, do three sets. In the first set, for the weight that I'm 
using, I should be failing in at least 12 reps. In the second set, I should be failing in at least 10 reps and above. And in the third set, I should be failing in at least eight reps for that set. Now, as you get stronger, you will start increasing the amount of reps per set if you're looking at the second and the third set. Let's say if I'm doing chest press using a weight 60 pounds, I would only increase the weight that I'm lifting for that exercise if I'm able to reach 12 in the first set, 12 in the second set, and 12 in the third set. Unless I'm able to do that, I won't be increasing the weight because then if you do that, you're compromising a lot on uh, the whole sequential recruitment as well as the range of motion. You will be holding the wrong position which can even damage your muscles. For example, for the chest press exercise, for the first set, I should be at least doing about 12 chest presses to failure. In the second set, I should be at least doing 10 chest presses for that weight to failure. And in the third set, I should be doing at least eight chest presses to failure. If I'm able to move to 12, 12, 12 for each of these sets, I'll be going to a higher weight, let's say 70 pounds, and then see if I'm able to maintain at least 10 and eight reps in my second and third set. The second evidence-based protocol is blood flow restriction training or katsu training. Blood flow restriction training is used by the likes of Olympic athletes to accelerate strength gains while using lighter weights which stress their muscles less. Blood flow restriction training implies restricting blood flow to specific muscles during exercise. This has multiple mechanisms of action. The first one being increasing metabolic stress in your muscles via partial arterial occlusion, full venous occlusion, which causes increased lactate and creatine phosphate in your muscles. These are essentially the metabolites that make you feel the burn during the exercise and they make your muscles stronger and cause a greater adaptive response. It also causes a greater hormonal response, essentially a growth hormone response compared to a similar intensity exercise without using BFR. It also affects your muscles on a gene expression level by inhibiting myostatin, which is a significant muscle growth inhibiting factor. Uh, a 2018 meta-analysis showed that low level blood flow restriction training produced about the same amount of strength and growth adaptations compared to high intensity strength training. In 20 to 80 year old healthy and habitually active adults, blood flow restriction training has profound benefits over muscle growth compared to normal exercise. First, it causes hypoxia, triggering a greater type 2 muscle fiber response because you're shifting to an anaerobic response, which is glycolysis. And as we discussed before, type 2 muscle fibers are way more potent, strong, and metabolically beneficial compared to type 1 fibers. Secondly, due to the decreased load on bones, joints, and tendons, it can be used for people who have muscular injuries or who are in their old age and cannot properly lift heavy weights and get the same response as high intensity strength training. Third, you will experience less pain because of the analgesic effect this training has for an unfounded reason. For example, if you're doing squats and you feel a lot of that burn, well, that burn would be way more tolerable with the BFR training, allowing you to do more reps for that training. It improves your ability to utilize oxygen. Since you're restricting blood flow to the muscle, it forces the muscle to be more effective in utilizing this oxygen, increasing your VO2 max. Fifth, the workouts with blood flow restriction training are way shorter than with traditional high intensity resistance training. I personally use Saga Fitness's blood flow restriction bands. The reason why I prefer this company over other companies is because these are the most advanced BFR bands you will see and are even being utilized in research. These bands, when you put them on your arms, they're able to find the limb occlusion pressure and they are able to occlude it at a safe percentage of that limb occlusion pressure so that you don't cause any harm to your body and are training at a safe occlusion pressure. Secondly, they give you at least a memory for that occlusion pressure because if you're using other bands, it's very hard to know exactly what occlusion pressure you used before. But with Saga Fitness, the band remembers and occludes it at a certain occlusion pressure. Thirdly, it gives you a graduated interval increase in occlusion pressures, unlike other bands where it's all very subjective. I do one session of blood flow restriction training, which lasts 16 minutes in one week completing my three day strength training routine. During this day, I do three exercises of four sets each using these cuffs, all of them being curls like biceps curl, triceps curl, and leg curl, totaling to about 12 sets. Each exercise has about four sets with the first set being 45 reps and the second to fourth set being about 15 reps for a total of 75 reps per exercise. This goes on for three different exercises 
cases in total. By the end of my BFR workout, I'm so damn sore, way more sore compared to my high intensity strength training. Using BFR technology is just changing my life. So guys, that's my full evidence-based routine, it's just 40 minutes a week for peak fitness. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Thank you for watching.